Hello, my name is Katherine Romero, and I am the current president of the Junior League of Greater Princeton for 2020-2021. Thank you so much for joining us today. And we appreciate the opportunity to show you our past history through the involvement of our past presidents and members. This is a year that we will never forget for two reasons. One is it's our centennial year, which we're extremely excited to celebrate with our members and the community. But also it's an epic year because this is a year of our pandemic, which is called COVID-19. This video will give you the ability to not only learn about our past presidents and past members, but all the wonderful things that we've been able to give back to Greater Princeton. So sit back, take a look, and see about all the extraordinary things that our league has to offer. It started way back with Mary Harriman when she was working with her 80 women in the settlement houses. I think they realized that they needed to have some skills. In fact, that's when the association was started. They started that 100 years ago when the Junior League joined because they felt that they could, that's the association, could help a training program and help the programmatic directions that the leagues wanted through starting this association. The 60s was a terrible time. I mean, it was just a time of all kinds of horrible things happening. Uh, the president was assassinated. Lyndon Johnson took over for him. Martin Luther King was assassinated. Bobby Kennedy was assassinated. It was absolutely a terrific time. And here I am joining the Junior League and wondering what in the world can one person do? In those days, there were some women working outside the home, um, but many women weren't still, or if they were, they were just sticking their toe in. And so the training was really very valuable, the organizational training, the um, thinking through the design of a project training, the uh, goals and objectives training. It gave a lot of credence to women in the workplace learning in, in a way that was comfortable for them and then being able to carry it either into their professional lives or into the community. And that, of course, is the, the one of the foundational beliefs of the Junior League is that the value of the trained volunteer is so key to the good work getting done. The Junior League is a place that women could go and feel kindred spirits. I felt the power that women have of supporting each other and also making a difference in community. I think there's something about volunteering that is truly unique and adds meaning to people's lives. You cannot pay someone for caring. When I joined, we were pretty much all stay-at-home moms. So we had kind of all the time in the world, particularly when our kids were in school, they'd be in school all day and we could do whatever we wanted. And that's how we were able to probably be able to do I think more than than the last several years. I mean, you know, most of the women have been working women now. Where we were, none of us were working mothers. We were just moms. And we were able to do a lot. The camaraderie of the women and the caring, I mean, and how hard that we would all work together on show houses. Those, to me, were the most fun things is the camaraderie of, the, of whether it was children's theater or it was show houses or whatever it was that was to me the, the best the league was an incredible opportunity to try to make inclusion respect and appreciation happen because people in the league are also very good at saying thank you and appreciation and really recognizing the unique qualities that we offer it. if you have meaning purpose and positive relationships, you have the ability to be happy and happier. Because happy is just a moment, to be, be happier is a process. So when we enjoy the process which the League provides by doing volunteer work, we allow people to have meaning and purpose, we allow people to have positive connections, and we give 
and in giving, we receive. The biggest um, impact have been the friendships. Um, I think being able, being new in the community and being able to literally step into an organization that um, provided me, you know, um, uh, community involvement, friendships with women that were committed like I, I was, um, leadership training, um, the training modules and training opportunities that AJLI provided were invaluable and uh, have been invaluable in my further um, involvement in the community with other organizations. So um, I've often been told that they can, t they can spot a junior league uh, woman just by the way they conduct meetings and, uh, and do business. So I think that's, uh, that's a big uh, compliment. I wasn't here at the beginning, <laughs> but I'm still there at 91. You see the, the transition from and the growth of from then until now. Fulfilling the needs of the community, whatever they happen to be. The impact of the Junior League of Greater Princeton in our community is, I don't even know that you could measure, honestly. And I think that a great deal of what we do is not on a public screen. And it's true, community empowerment. And I, I don't know that you can put that on a poster. I don't know that you can quantify that in numbers. I think what you see is not only what we're doing with our partners and when we walk into those rooms, how we are working with those children or women or families, um, but what we're also developing in the women who join the league. Uh, some of my favorite uh, activities were the show houses and they were a lot of work but they were a lot of fun and there was no greater pride than opening night when we had our patrons party and saw that house that was bare bones come together. 100 years of history is hard to just sweep aside so our longevity alone I think speaks volumes to the women that have made our league what it is and the history of the region, I think, was shaped largely by the women of the Junior League and their colleagues and women who were trained through our league to do different kinds of work and community work. Again, the value of a trained volunteer is so important. Balancing tradition with change, and it's actually written in the history books, as the communities change, we change, but yet there were some traditions we remained that remained with us. And those are the traditions that are born out of our mission. And the ways, we, ways we've approached our issues have changed, but yet the tradition of making the change has stayed. And that's the balancing act that we've always had and that we continue to have, and I see that we're having. I, I believe in what it tries to do for women. It tries to give us a voice in our community. It tries to help us become community leaders. It tries to help us make connections with other women, to connect us to the issues that are happening in, in our local areas, to help us become, I, I think, probably more self-aware as well as just aware, you know, aware of the things that are happening around us. It tries to help those who are less fortunate. I think in the community it matters because, I mean, we're helping people in the community. We're you know, we, we bring the Santa to the events. We help with supplying clothes to that clothes closet. We help go in and teach interviewing and job skills to women who are in, in need of those things. So I think we help by bringing the skills that we have to the people who need them. The Junior League experience for me has really developed me as, as a person, as a volunteer. I felt it gave me skills to actually go back out into the workforce. The skills that I polished in fundraising, how to be a leader, how to be a co-chair, how to get the most out of your volunteers was all due to my league experience. I'm very thankful for that. Uh, the JLGP impacting my life is another thing I don't know if I could quantify. Um, the friendships alone um, 
I don't even know if I could talk about it without getting emotional. It's literally impacted my entire family. For the last decade, my husband and I have served as Santa and Mrs. Claus um, for the Rise Party. Even though we're an organization of women, watching him be able to participate and him connect to children that way um, has been profound for me. Oh, the JLGP matters so much to the community because what we do is we have, through our strategic plan, the well thought out vision and the trained volunteers to carry through that vision. It hasn't changed that much. We still have the same vision. We still do an agenda. We still give, you know, opportunities. The advice I would give to anybody interested in joining the league or who have already joined and is to give whatever you can. Find something that you just can't get do anywhere else and get involved in that. Learn something new. The Junior League of Greater Princeton allowed me to be involved as I could at that moment. And I think that's really important. You being there and you being present in that time is amazing. And I think the Greater Princeton League is very good about embracing women where they are and giving what they can at that time. And so my biggest piece of advice is to give as much as you can, even if that's just a little bit, do that. If you're at all interested or at all intrigued, at all wondering if this is something that you should do, I would say absolutely join, try it. Um, the League is something that you benefit from the more you put in, the more you get out of it. I would definitely say, absolutely give it a try. You will not regret it. Um, you're bound to meet some fabulous women. You're bound to benefit some community organizations which really need us. And you're bound to make some great friends. So absolutely, do it. Come with an open mind. Uh, come with an open heart. Be ready to pitch in, be ready to help. Be ready to share your ideas of where you think we can make the greatest impact. Yeah. Be yourself, but be yourself and, and be open to hearing from others, learning from others, sharing your knowledge, sharing your skills. Be ready to have fun. Be ready to make friends. Just be, be, just be ready. <laughs>